<laughs> okay, so with the dot, okay, what do we do with the exponents? It's been a while. Okay, we're going to multiply the bigs. Okay, the coefficients, and we're going to add the littles, which is the exponent. Okay, and then last, on all of these, you're going to uh, check for negatives and then simplify. Okay, so um, they're always going to go in these steps. Okay, that says negatives. Check for negatives. Uh, I'm not writing them all out all day. Okay, so um, we're going to multiply the big. So three times two. It's going to be six. You're going to multiply these ones and add up these ones. So six and to the fifth. Okay, is there negatives? No. So, and then this does not need simplified any further. So this one is done. Okay, look at number three. Multiply your bigs. So what are you gonna get for the bigs? <coughs> Six, three times two. Okay, this is gonna be, gosh, dang it. Struggling today? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna say six x to the, to the fifth, y to the, Third. You guys better pick it up. They're going to take all day. Okay. Uh, is there any negatives? No. No. Okay. And so this one is fully simplified. Okay. With the parentheses, what do we do? We're going to, okay, you can do two things. You can multiply and or distribute, however you want to look at it. And then check for negatives and then simplify. Okay, so um, our first step is going to be to add that one. Okay, so three to the, what is two times one? Two. X to the two times two. It's going to be four. Okay, do we have any negatives? No, and so we can go ahead and simplify. What is three squared? Nine, so nine x four, and that one is gonna be done. Okay, seven is gonna be samesies. Put the one right there. So you're gonna get two to the, what is negative one times one? Huh? Let's go, get on this number and let's go. Negative one. Y to the negative one times negative three. <coughs> Positive three. Okay, do we have any negatives? Yeah. Yes, okay, so draw your bar. Two to the negative one, where is that guy going? On the bottom and it's gonna become a positive. Y to the three on top. Okay, and then we simplify. What is two to the one power? It's just two, so you can just erase that one right there um, and go on about your day, okay? If it was two to the four or two to the Two, okay, you would have to convert that to a four, okay, so obviously you wouldn't be able to just simplify it or circle it, but in this case, we most definitely can. Okay, nine, what's the rule with the fraction bar ones? Okay, 
What do we need to do? We're going to reduce the fraction. <coughs> And then we're going to subtract the exponent top minus bottom. Okay, and then as always, check for negatives and then simplify. Okay, so 3 over 4 is our fraction. What does that reduce to? Still 3 over 4. All right, so it's still going to be 3 over 4. And then we subtract the exponents, top minus bottom. So this is going to be n to the 1 minus 1. What is it? 1 minus 1? Zero. 0. So it's going to be 3 to the 4, n to the 0. What is anything to the zero power? One or what? Okay, so it's one. However, just watch me, you know, because it's not like, okay. So if we change this to a one, what do you do with these two? Multiply them. So what is three times one? Three. Okay, so this really just cancels out. Okay, it's, you're still going to get that 3, okay? So n to the 0, a to the 0, anything to the 0 is 1 and 4. It cancels, okay? So um, you're just going to be left with that 3 over 4. Okay, 11. What does that fraction reduce to? 2 over 4. 1 half. Okay, so we got 1 half. N to the 1 minus 1 is 0, and or it does what? It cancels, so you're just left with 1 half. Okay. Okay, the next section on here is all about simplifying radicals. Um, there's not very many notes that I can give you. Um, by now, it's kind of easier to know it or you don't, okay? Um, it, because you've learned it through practice, okay? So, 16. Uh, first of all, what are the only numbers we can circle and or group? What are the numbers we can circle or group? Two, three, five, seven, okay? Those are our magic numbers. Okay, so 16, we got 2 and 8, 2 and 4, 2 and 2. So, who can go? Two groups of twos. And what do you do with those? We're going to multiply them, so 2 times 2 is going to be 4. Okay, and nobody's left on the inside, which is just a 4. And hopefully you've learned throughout the years that a square root of 16 is 4. Okay. Okay, 15. What is the very first thing you should be doing? Dropping that negative 5 down. All the way down at the bottom. Okay, drop them down. So we got negative 5 and then the square root. Okay, 448. 2 and 224. Okay, 224. 2 and 112. 112. 56. 28. 2 and 14. 2 and 7. How many groups of twos can go? Okay, 
Okay. One, two, three. Good. One, two, three. Who cannot go? A seven. Okay. And then I have X's. How many X's do I have? Four. How many of those guys can go? Two groups. So we got X and X. Okay. What are you going to do with these things? Multiply them. So what is negative five times two times two times two? Negative 40 x squared square root of 7. Okay, 128. What are some factors of 128? 2 and 64. Okay. 64. 2 and 64. 2 and 32. 32. 2 and 16. 16. 2 and 8. 2 and 4. Two and two. Okay, how many groups of twos can go? One, two, three. One, two, three groups of twos. Who could not go? One, two. Okay, I have one U. Where is he gonna go? Inside. He cannot go. Okay, and then I got. Four V's. Two groups can go. Okay, two times two times two. <coughs> Eight V squared. Two U. Okay, we're gonna cross off 19 and 20, just for time's sake. Okay, so cross out 19 and 20. Okay, 21, with adding and subtracting radicals, what is the rule? We didn't do this that long ago. What's the rule? Okay. The number that's here, aka the index, and the number underneath, okay, they need to be the same. Um, <coughs> actually, let me switch this up a little bit. Okay, those ones need to be the same. So they both need to have, we'll say a square under both, okay? And they both need to have um, a two here and they both need to have a three here or whatever. Um, and then if they are, then we add the outside. And you're gonna keep the inside. Okay, so um, are those the same? No. But the 12 can be reduced, okay? So what are some factors of 12? Two and six, two and three. So what is the 12 radical going to become? What is the simplified version? Two square root of three, okay? Plus we have this square root of three, okay? So now are the insides the same? Yeah, so now we can add the outsides. And what are you going to get for the outsides? 
3 square root of 3. Okay, there's really a 1 right here. So 3 square root of 3. Okay, where some of you guys go wrong, you guys put a 6 on the inside. How does somebody get a 6 on the inside? <coughs> yeah, they're adding the inside. We keep the inside the same, okay? We are only adding the outside together, okay? Look at 23. What can I put together? The fives, okay? So I got a negative one plus two. One square root of five. And then I got this negative square root of three. Okay, can I put those guys together? Why not? They're not the same inside, okay? They have to have the same index and the same uh, number underneath that radical, okay? So we cannot put those ones together. Okay, multiplying radicals. You're gonna multiply the outsides, dang, I spelled that wrong, and insides. How many I don't know. Three? <laughs> yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so we're gonna multiply the insides and outsides together. If we look at 25, what are the outsides? They're ones, okay? So one times one is still one, which is nothing on a radical, okay? Uh, so really, you're just multiplying the insides. 15 times three, it's gonna be 45, okay? And then we can reduce this radical to three and 15, three and five. So what is this radical going to become? Three square root of five. Okay, the ones where we distribute, same thing. You're gonna multiply the insides together and the outsides together. Okay, is the 15, is that an inside or an outside piece? That's an inside piece. What about the six? It's an inside piece. What about the four? That is an outside piece, okay? So inside pieces and outside pieces do not go together. Okay, so um, these two are both inside pieces so we can put them together. What is 15 times six? Hmm? 90. Okay. And then for this other one, you're going to get 4 square root of 15. Okay. We cannot put those ones together. One's an inside piece, and one's an outside piece. Okay. However, if you look at 28, they're all inside pieces. Okay. So yours is going to look like square root of 90 and a square root or square root of 30 and a square root of something else. Okay. Uh, 90. What are some factors in 90? Two and forty-five, and then we got something three and fifteen, three and five. Okay, so what is that radical going to become? Who can go? Three square root of what? Uh uh. Y of 10. Yep, the two and the five can't go, and so you're gonna multiply them, and then you're gonna have the 10 left over. Okay, uh, what about 15? Can that be simplified? What are some factors of 15? Three and five, so who can go? Nobody can go, so then they're gonna back on the inside. So this one's just gonna stay four square root of 15. Solve each discrete exponential growth and decay problem. Okay, let's test your guys' skills. How can you tell uh, which one uses which formula? Because we went over two different formulas over two different days. How do you know which one uses what formula? 
Okay, one very distinctly says a different word than the other because you need to be able to tell. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Okay, so if you look at this one, does it say compounded anywhere? Just now, where's the other one to do? So this one is the one where you're going to use the easy formula, okay? Um, Plus or minus R to the T. Okay? So, this is the easy way. Okay, not the easy way, but it's the easier out of the two. There's less stuff in the formula. Okay, and you know the easiest way because it does not say compounded anywhere. Okay, what is our A going to be? Yeah, 1800. Okay, really quick. And then is this going to be plus or minus? Y plus. Yeah, it's increasing. Okay. Uh, what about our rate? What's going to be our rate? 0 0.03 <coughs> time. Huh? Nine. Then looking on the ninth floor. Okay. And then type it in, see what you get. Two three four eight point five five. Somebody agree? Five nine. Sorry. Okay. Uh, make sure you have this formula on your sheet. Okay. I'm not gonna give it to you test day. Uh, make sure that you have the formula on your sheet. Okay, this one, the formula is a little bit different. And read the problem. Look, see how this says compounded? That lets you know to use the other formula. Okay, so we got, and make sure you have this one on your sheet. A, dang it. No, I just wrote A, parentheses. Just, just having a rough life these days. P, and it's going to be 1 plus R over N and T. Okay, so this formula differs a little bit. Um, so we got 20, 73, 1 plus my rate is 5%. What is going to be my N? 12. Okay. And then we got 12 times 11. Okay, and while you guys are typing that in, let me give you a basic life lesson. Okay, um, some things you're gonna want a higher interest rate on, and some things you're gonna want a lower interest rate on. Things like a car payment, a house payment, you want the lowest interest rate you possibly can. That comes, you get that based on your credit score. That's how some people can pop buy a brand new, uh, I don't know, freaking Lamborghini, and their car payments are very low because they have a very good credit score. However, if you have a very high credit score, your payment even for like a basic, I don't know, Chevy Cruze or something, your payments can be through the roof if your credit score is high, okay? When you're talking about interest for money, for your money, she took her $2,000 and invested in a savings account. 
okay? You want the highest interest rate possible. That means that the bank is gonna keep checking your money and they give you free money, okay? Um, and what do you get for your answer? Three, five, eight, eight, nine. Nine what? Three. Okay, so really what this is saying, okay? And this is how people make millions in your life. You guys want to be rich? This is how you do it, okay? It's investing your money. Is $2,000 a lot of money? Absolutely not, okay? Uh, it may feel like it, but it's not. She took her $2,000, put it in this bank account. Every single month, they check her money. And they check her money. And every single month, okay, they give her more money based on how much money she had in there. She eventually has this much money in there after 11 years. Now, although that does not seem like a lot, from this 3588 to 2073, she put no more money in that bank account. It was free money from the bank. That's what investing is, okay? So investing is when people essentially give you free money, okay? So she made quite a bit, about $1,500. She didn't do anything, okay? So that's why, like, some people will put money away for their kids, when they're first born, and by the time they're 18 or 30 or whatever, they have buku bucks in it, okay? So that'd be my life advice to you, is to definitely invest, okay? But if you're gonna invest, invest in compound, not yearly interest, okay? Last one, uh, we make this XY chart, and what numbers do we use? Negative two, negative one, is zero, one, and two. All right, and then you're just gonna type this in your calculator. You type in four times one over two to the x, uh, and you type in all these different numbers. And what do you get for your first one? Sixteen. Eight. Four. Four. Two. Two. One. One. Okay, so then we go through here and graph it. We got sixteen, eight, four, two, one. 